Well, we've spent most of this chapter talking about skeletal muscle, which is voluntary. We do have two other types of muscle in the body as well, so we're gonna wrap up this chapter with a couple of notes about them. Cardiac and smooth muscle are the other two major types in the body. Cardiac muscle is named cardiac muscle because it's found in the heart. That's the only place that it is at, um, so we'll deal with it separately. And then smooth muscle, this is the muscle type that is found in a lot of our organs, uh, lining a lot of our organs, a lot of the organs of the digestive tract um, are lined with smooth muscle. And so this is a, another type that we need to, to describe and then we'll revisit in some detail um, when we talk about the digestive system. Okay, so what do these two muscle types have in common? They have some things in common, so we're going to start off just kind of grouping them together. Things that they have in common. Um, these two muscle types are involuntary, so we don't have conscious control over them. They are involuntary. They are regulated by the autonomic nervous system. So I'm going to bring back a picture, a picture from chapter, what was it? I think this was chapter 9. Um, the autonomic nervous system, this is a picture from that chapter just showing the different innervations. We've got two divisions of the autonomic nervous system, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Um, in this picture, the sympathetic uh, division is shown with red lines, parasympathetic is shown with blue. And let's revisit something here, because this was a question that didn't go so great on the exam. Uh, so just to review this, take a look at all of these different organs. Most of the organs that are depicted here have innervations by both of those divisions, sympathetic in red and parasympathetic in blue. Um, so why is that? Why are organs innervated by both divisions? Well, keep in mind, the big idea behind these two divisions is, uh, so sympathetic activates the, the fight or flight response, so it kind of revs things up. The parasympathetic uh, makes a lot of things relax. This is called the rest and digest uh, sort of division. So um, sometimes, right, sometimes you'll have an organ that needs to be sped up and activated. Other times that very same organ needs to be slowed down and inhibited. So in most cases these organs have to be innervated by both in order to allow us the control in both directions. So anyway, coming back to muscle, what we're dealing with right now, um, okay, so the, the cardiac as well as smooth muscles are regulated by autonomic nervous system. Um, okay, so um, the way that these muscles work, it is due to, to myosin and actin uh, contracting, but the contraction mechanism is a little bit different, so we'll come back to that in just a minute. First up, let's take a look at cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle, when we look at it in a microscope, we see a similar striations, um, a striated pattern similar to what we saw with skeletal muscles as well. Cardiac muscles are striated and that's because they do have sarcomeres. So they have that same sort of arrangement of myosin and actin filaments overlapped with each other and they can slide against each other in order to facilitate a contraction. What's different though, what's different from skeletal muscles is that uh, a few key things. Cardiac muscles are short, not cardiac muscles, cardiac muscle fibers are short. So individual cells are not quite so elongated, they are shorter. And they also have a lot of branch points. Uh, so you can see that in the picture, right? This cell, um, it branches up. Here's a, a division that goes up here. Here's another one that goes down here. So they've got these branching um, sorts of structures. And then all of the cells in the heart are connected by gap junctions. Those are shown in purple in this picture. Those gap junctions are uh, a type of electrical synapse. So it provides a, a junction between two cells where ions can just flow directly from one cell into the next. And this is very important. This allows the heart muscle as a whole to beat sort of in unison. Um, the fact that the cells are connected electrically allows that contraction to be a uniform contraction. It's not like one cell uh, contracts and then sends a signal to the next cell, tells it to contract. It's, it's almost immediate due to the fact that we have electrical junctions between the cells. So when we're talking about the heart, we'll revisit the heart in more detail in chapter 13. Um, but a lot of times we talk about the myocardium, and this is just referring to sort of the, the muscle as a whole. Um, the heart has two separate 
kind of muscles. Um, it's got the atria, the upper chambers. Those tend to contract sort of as one unit, so we've referred to that as one myocardium. And then the lower chambers of the heart, the ventricles, those separately tend to contract sort of in unison, so that's another myocardium. So two my myocardia make up the heart as a whole. With the heart, um, if you'll recall, so um, the heart, I think we mentioned this back when we were talking about the nervous system, the heart will actually beat on its own. It will beat spontaneously. What the nervous system does, the autonomic nervous system, is helps to control the rate, the rate of contractions. So the nervous innervation, um, it can either speed up the heart rate or it can slow it down. But just focusing on the heart itself, not worrying about the nervous system right now, uh, just talking about the cardiac muscle, Okay, how is it able to contract on its own? How does it initiate its own contraction? This is due to the presence of pacemaker cells. So uh, we've probably all heard about pacemakers. This is a device that can be implanted um, to help regulate the, the pacing of the heart. But device aside, we all have our own set of pacemaker cells that exist naturally within our hearts. And what these cells do is they actually they have leaky membranes so if we just let these cells kind of do what they do naturally what will happen is ions will leak across the plasma membrane and that leads to depolarization which will eventually initiate an action potential so when we look at uh, sort of what the heart does there's um, there's what's called a pre-potential. This is due to the, the leaky membranes. Okay, once that depolarization reaches threshold, then the rest of the action potential will take, take off and, and the heart will contract. So those are pacemaker cells. We'll see those in more detail in the chapter 13, I believe, as well.